Hello and welcome back everyone to the next episode on anubavtrainings.com. In this series of videos, we are learning how to use cloud application programming model with Mongo database. We are learning in this series a end-to-end -end application which is going to create, read, update, delete customers in our SAP system using Mongo database. In the episodes by far, we have seen how to create your MongoDB instance using Mongo Atlas in the cloud for free. Then we created our first CAPM project in the last session, added a simple database entity called customer. And then we've also added the service and service implementation. In today's session, we will see how to implement the create request to insert data to Mongo database using CAPM implementation. So let's get started. So by far you saw in my VS code, we have created a connection and we are connecting to a new database called Anubo Trainings. And we've implemented a event handler for insert on customer entity. But my function is still not there. So let's continue and implement the function for inserting data. I will switch over back to the slides and first I will implement a insert. So let me grab this code. Kindly check the description of current video to see all the source code which I'm writing in this session. So in this function, which is a async function, as you know that we wanted to use latest JavaScript feature and run JavaScript in synchronous mode. Hence, we relieve on async functions. We will call all the sub functions with await. So the JavaScript is going to work synchronously. It's not going to continue to the next statement and we don't have to get into a mash of callbacks and promises. So this is more of like any other traditional programming language using synchronous behavior. If you are new to JavaScript and Node.js and willing to learn end-to-end -end CAPM, please join my CAPM training on anubavtrainings.com where we discuss these basics of Node.js as well in our detailed course. This, course, this particular series is designed for those who have already taken my CAPM training and wanted to learn how to connect with MongoDB. So now we have a client instance which we've already created using Mongo driver. And the URI is what we've, we've learned how to create that in the last class. And then we are connecting to our database. Our database name is Anubav Trainings. Then we are going to access a collection called customer. This is our database table and then it is going to insert one record now how do we know that this is how we can insert data to mongodb for that you can switch to the mongo database documentation where you can see how to insert a record in a mongo database so on a particular collection which is in this case customer you can fire insert one it's all json inspired syntax with javascript so that you don't have to learn multiple programming languages if you know json and javascript it is sufficient enough to utilize CAPM and Node.js with Mongo driver to work end to end with this scenario. So that's the main USP you get. And as I also told you in my first session, the benefits of MongoDB, it is used to both structured and unstructured data. And there is no schema which you have to fix before you start working with it. So even tomorrow you can have more properties added to your database table tuple it is pretty easy. You don't have to go and change your database columns at all. And based on the data you pass, it will automatically go into create the schema for your record. That's the main benefit you get with MongoDB. So you will see that in a minute. So if you remember our database instance, which we have here, and in this database instance, once I go to view data, I don't have right now any collection called uh, Anubav Trainings. So you can see here I have some of the other collections but i don't have yet the anubo trainings collection available at the moment so the moment this insert happens system is automatically going to create a database schema and inside that a table called customer so the moment we run this it this is what is going to happen and of course the id whatever id it inserts that id i'm going to get the data back and we are going to return that as a response to the post request so this is all what we had now. So let's start our application, our CAPM application. Make sure you've already installed all the required dependencies and now it's time to start. So let me just go ahead and do a CDS run to start our project. 
you can see the project has started and now I'll directly switch over to the postman tool to insert a new record so here you can see I am already accessing my local host 40004 and we are going to insert data using our catalog service on customer entity with a raw JSON data and this is our data structure if you see the data structure is very similar to what we have created in our first episode in our data model. So it has name, type, email ID, all these properties I'm, I'm passing. So let's fire a post request and I click on send. And voila, you can see something happened. By the way, this is a OData V4 you get out of the box from the system. So you can see we get a response as ID, auto generated ID. Yes, and now if you switch over back to MongoDB, what you observe after a quick refresh, a unabout training schema should have got created. There you go. Inside this, a customer table got created, and this table has got one record inserted inside. Cool, now. So that's the beauty of Mongo database. You don't have to create your database table upfront. And guess what? The best part here, which I love the most, is the ID, the primary key handling is automatic. Of course, you can fully control that, but this is one great benefit you get. You can also copy clone data here. This is something which is easy. Now, what I will do is probably insert some more records. So let's try to insert one more record, Ananya. And I'm just going to put customer type as C. C means customer, S means supplier. So let me add some data. I added one more customer. Let me add one more. Rohit, some demo data. I will just add one more customer. Let's say Max. And let's change the company name. Samsung. I will add one more. Rojo. Just insert. So I'm adding a couple of customers here. Let's say Maxwell. I will put company name as SAP, let's say. Let's say Robin. I put Simon. And this time I change country to India. Let's change the company here to RIL. Let's put Srinivas. Again, India. And we'll put here Mohan. Let's put Gita. I'll put another company name. And let me put a couple of suppliers as well. So I will put here another supplier, let's say Shiva, who's a supplier from, let's say, IBM. Raj, IBM. Victor, let's say, LNT. So I have inserted some data of customers and suppliers. So of course, you can always go to browser and you can browse your data collections always here. This is certainly fine, but usually we don't want it to sometimes open the browser all the time. And maybe we don't even have access to open as administrator this browser window. So we can also use a tool. So Mongo, by the way, has a lot of tools. Even the MongoDB also gives a tool called uh, Mongo Campus, you, which you can use to connect from your local computer to the database. But I personally love a, another open source tool which is provided uh, by a third party called Robo3T. So let me just go and search for Robo3T. I will give you the link in the chat window in the description of the video to install this tool, Robo3T. Just download and install this. It's very simple tool to, to use. So after inserting the data from Postman, you can see this is what the second step was. We are now going to go to Robo3T tool to just download, install it and connect to our database. So we just installed. I already did that before the session started. So let me launch the tool. It's like any other database client tool. And now we're going to add a new connection. So right click and add a new connection. And we will choose from URI. Now at this point, I will pause my video for a second. And if you remember in the last episode in the in the console in VS Code, we have taken a URL. We have built a URL with the user ID and password. So that's the same URL we are going to utilize now. So I'm going to scroll up, 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 and I'm going to take the URL, which is having my client secret and user ID password. So I just pause my video for a second. I'm just grabbing the URL. Yes, I did that. And let me switch over back to resume. 
and I'll switch over back to this tool. So here I will paste the URL from the URI. I paste it. You can see I paste it and I say from URI connection. And you can see this is the uh, details. It has automatically fetched. And let me give a name called my Mongo Cloud. So I click on save and you see Mongo Cloud connection is created. Let's double click and you will see it's open. I can see my database and about trainings schema and then I can see my collection, my database table customer. I can double click and it fires a query. Wow. So we just inserted 14 records and all 14 records. You can see them here. Wow. So now do you think Mongo is not powerful? Maybe wrong. Mongo is much powerful than SQL. So for example, a very typical requirement uh, in a typical database is to aggregate data. So I'm, I'm, I wanted to know how many customers I have in let's say country per country. Give me the total count of customer per country. So usually in ABAP or any other programming language with SQL, you use a group by clause. The very similar thing you can do on the Mongo as well. So I will switch over back and then I will come to uh, my query. So let's go to the slides and I'm just going to grab this query. All of this is available on the Mongo standard documentation, which I showed you. So here you can go and read more about uh, how to work with Mongo queries and reading and writing data to the Mongo. So now I'm going to go back to the system and go to my robo 3T tool and instead of find we're going to fire aggregate. So I'm saying please aggregate my data. Yes, and I wanted to aggregate based on a comparison condition first of all. So let me just rephrase it a little bit. Yeah, due to copy paste uh, some special characters have come. We just have to get rid of them. Yeah, okay, good. So now you can see we are just kind of uh, unfortunately I can't zoom in. So what we're doing, we are aggregating. We are searching uh, all the customer, all the customer types. So get me all the customers where the, the all the records where the type is customer and then use a group by clause group by all the country fields. So you can see we have a country field here, US and India. We had two and for each of them, please start counting and summing and finally do a sort in descending order based on the sum based on the count what you do. So this is the typical group by class what you can do in a SQL database which we are doing here on MongoDB and now I'm just going to press F5 on my Robo 3T tool and you can see we've got US and India and in US we have seven customers and in India we have four customers. Wow. So this could be a good data set for you to build analytics. Yeah, so maybe if time permits in the at the end of these classes, we will also try to build some analytics utilizing this aggregate function and feed this data to our UI5 chart. And this is going to be very, very fast. Yeah, because the database is no SQL database and it's all all cloud. You can take full advantage of the benefits of this no SQL database. So we will utilize this at later point of time. But the idea is to sensitize all of you that it's also possible to perform aggregates on on MongoDB and it's going to be done very, very fast. So this is the benefit what we have. So what we saw in today's episode is to create a service and also implement the insert into the database table. In our next session, we will learn about how to query data and how to implement the get request. And slowly we will also see how to support the filtering, sorting, searching and pagination capabilities using MongoDB. I hope you enjoying this series of videos. Please share, like, subscribe this channel for more videos like this and I will catch you up in the next episode. Thank you so much. Goodbye.